In this video, I will explain what Facebook Conversions API Gateway is, who is it for, how to configure it, and, spoiler alert, why I don't recommend it. Also, did you know that 85% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed? If you want to stay up to date with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics, and you want to get this kind of videos first, then subscribe to my channel. The classic old school setup for Facebook conversion tracking looked like this. You have a website. On that website, you have Facebook Pixel installed, and that Pixel sends the data and the conversions to Facebook. But because of various browser restrictions and browser extensions, Facebook started pushing us to use Conversions API. So with Conversions API Gateway, the setup would look like this. You would still have the Facebook Pixel, which sends data directly to Facebook, but also it would start sending data to some custom domain of yours. Here we have a server which is designed only to accept Facebook events and then send them further to Facebook. So if you decide to use Conversions API Gateway, you would have both the Pixel and the Conversions API. In theory, this sounds great, but later in the video, I will show you some problems with this approach. So who is Facebook Conversions API Gateway designed for? It's designed for those who don't have enough skills or resources for server-side tagging. It's for those who are looking for an easy way where you don't need to have some technical knowledge and you still want to increase data accuracy. But in this case, I highlighted the word increase because there are some nuances here that I will later explain. And then it's for those who are not using Facebook plugins that automatically install both Facebook Conversions API and Facebook Pixel. For example, maybe you're working with some custom website and someone installed Facebook Pixel a long time ago directly in the code, nobody's touching that, and now you want to start using Conversions API. So if you don't have the resources, you don't have the developers, but you still want to start using Conversions API, then this gateway might be an option for you. So before I show you the limitations or the problems with Facebook Conversions API Gateway, first I need to show you how it is set up and then I will show you those limitations. So the setup process looks fairly simple. By the way, first of all, on this demo website, I have installed a basic Facebook pixel. Right now it just sends the page view event and if I open developer tools, go to network, then enter Facebook, and then reload the page. I will see that a request was sent to Facebook. There's also a request related to the page view event. So right now, this is just a pure client-side setup done in the browser. So the setup of the Facebook Conversions API Gateway is fairly simple. Technically, you could do that from the interface of your Facebook Events Manager. However, the pricing starts there from around $30 because they would use Amazon servers. A cheaper option, but still reliable, is Stape. So if you go to pricing on their page and then look for dedicated gateways, here, if we click Learn More, we will see that Meta's Conversions API Gateway, it will cost $10, or if you want to have more pixels, then the price increases, but the price per pixel becomes lower. Also, they offer a seven-day trial, so you will have plenty of time to play around with this. So I will click Start 7-Day Free Trial, then I will create an account, so I will enter my email, then I will give it a gateway name, for example, I don't know, maybe the name of my Soundbox website, then I will select the location, and once I enter the email, then I will click Create. Oh, I need to, of course, agree with Terms of Use. Now click Create. Then I will need to confirm the email address. So now I will pause the video and do that. Then after I clicked the link in the email, I entered the password. So click Save Password. And then my gateway was created. Now I am asked to select the subscription plan. So the first seven days are free, but then you will be charged $10 per month, or you can add the card later. It might take several moments until the gateway is created, I mean the server, and now it is running. So the next step is to finish the setup. Click here. Here you will be redirected to another domain and it will be the interface of the Conversions API gateway because Stapes interface is the interface for the server management. But of course, there are not many things to manage here. And then if you want to log in to the actual interface of the gateway, you will need to enter your password right here. 
So it might be a different password compared to Stape. It might be the same. So it's your choice. Then I also need to make sure that the email is the same as it was during the sign up, and then click Create Account. So the account is created. Now I am inside the gateway. Right now it's not connected to the pixel on the website. So the pixel here still works as usual. But when I will connect my pixel to this gateway, some additional feature will be activated for my pixel and it will start sending data not only directly to Facebook, but also to the conversions API. So to do that, I will need to click add data source, then I will select Facebook login, click connect, then you will need to confirm that this is you, then you need to select the business account, then continue then select the pixel that you have installed on a website. So on my demo website, this is the pixel and I will click continue. And that's it. The next step that you should definitely do is to configure DNS, which means that you will need to map a custom subdomain dedicated just to Convergence API Gateway. And that domain will be used by your Facebook pixel, which is installed on a website. So click configure DNS, then click optimize, and here you should come up with some subdomain, which is not used by anything else. It will be used only by the conversions API gateway. So the root domain is the domain of your site. If your website is www.example.com, then just enter example.com here. And then the subdomain, so CPG, for example. And then before you click continue, you should create a DNS record, which is a C name in the system where you're managing your domain. So I'm using Cloudflare and I am inside DNS and I will add a new DNS record where the type is C name, then name will be the subdomain and the target will be this particular domain right here. So copy and paste it, then disable proxying and click save. Now you will need to wait for a while. It depends on the vendor that you're using to manage your domain. It might be minutes, it might be hours. With Cloudflare, it's pretty fast. So I think I will wait a minute or so and then I will click continue. By the way, did you know that I have a bunch of free eBooks on Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics? So if you want to better learn these topics, then click the link below the video, download those eBooks and get started. All right, I have waited for a bit and now I will click continue and see if this works. All right, my setup was marked as optimized. I see the green check mark, so this is good. Then I can go to overview and just to summarize what we have done so far. I have connected a particular pixel to this gateway and I also mapped a custom subdomain. Now we need to wait for a bit longer because this change, especially the part where the custom subdomain will be used, it will not start working immediately. It might take a while. For some, it might be like one hour. Based on my tests, it was between five and 10 minutes. So now again, I will pause the video and after five minutes, I will continue and we will see what is happening. All right, I've waited for several minutes. Now let's open developer tools on my website where Facebook Pixel is installed and let's see what is happening. So I will reload the page. And then in the filter, while I am in the network tab, I will enter Facebook. So the request to Facebook was still sent. However, if I open the Metapixel helper, I will see that an event ID was added. Since I started using the Convergence API gateway and the same event will be sent with Pixel and also to the Convergence API, both of those events must have the same ID. So this is handled automatically. I have the event ID right here and another request for the same event was also sent to my Convergence API gateway. So the subdomain starts with CPG. And if I click here, I will see that a request was sent to this subdomain. Here we have something. And then in the payload, I see what kind of information was sent. And we also have the same event ID right here. So as you can see, without any serious technical knowledge, anyone could connect 
Facebook Convergence API gateway and then start using Convergence API that way. So according to Facebook, they say that the average cost per result improvement could be expected up to 13% just by implementing Convergence API gateway the way that I showed you just now. And also there was a reported 7% increase in the number of conversions. So on paper, it sounds good. But my question is, is it though? I mean, in theory, this sounds good, but in reality, I think the numbers should be lower because this kind of setup is still quite limited. Let me show you what I mean. So in this browser, I have installed a browser extension called Ghostery. It can block various trackers, including Facebook Pixel. So now if I resume it, let's see what happens then. I will remove this filter, then reload the page and then look for Facebook. And I see that Facebook request was blocked. Because this request was blocked, Facebook Pixel was not loaded properly on a page. And since it was not loaded on a page, it means that there was no request to Conversions API either. So if we look at this particular chart, if an extension blocks this part, it means that this part is also automatically blocked. So if you were expecting to reduce the impact of browser extensions, that improvement will be very insignificant because most of the popular browser extensions, they're quite aggressive and they will still block your setup. So I would say you can expect the improvement at best of one or 2%. So if you were expecting a significant increase in data accuracy, track more conversions, reduce the impact of browser extensions, then Facebook Conversions API Gateway barely helps with that. If you ask me, a much better option would be to have a proper server-side setup. Sure, it's more difficult to configure, but the results are also much better. I mean, for example, if you are using Stape, they have a custom loader feature that modifies the entire URL of the request sent to your server, which means that the data has a much higher chance of reaching that server. And then from the server, you send data further to Facebook. Also, cookies. Facebook Conversions API Gateway does not extend cookie lifetime. While with server-side tagging, you can definitely do that. If you want to learn how to use server-side tagging and supercharge your setup, I will share some resources below the video. And if you want to save time, avoid trial and error, and get support while learning it, then take a look at my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course, where I have plenty of server-side tagging content. I'll post a link to it below. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.